The unsolved murder of Deanna Kremen has haunted Somerville, Massachusetts since 1995. A quarter century later, the family is no less desperate for answers. It's March 29, 1995, and Deanna Kremen is spending the evening with her boyfriend, Thomas LeBlanc. Her 17th birthday is just a few days away, but by morning, any thoughts of celebration would be gone. According to police, Tommy walked his girlfriend halfway home before saying goodnight, leaving Deanna to walk the rest of the way alone. She turned the corner a straight shot to her house, and that was the last time anyone saw her alive. The next morning, I called her boyfriend's house. I said, put Deanna on the phone now. And he said, what do you mean, put Deanna? And he's telling me she's not there. And all the questions all went through my head. Kathy was not left wondering for long. Deanna's body was found that morning behind a housing complex not far from the Kremens' home. Two children who actually Deanna had babysat for were on their way to school, and they found her body. My worst nightmare was maybe she got hit by a car. She was murdered. She was sexually assaulted. She was strangled to death by bare hands. She had bones broken. I remember the floor falling out. If anybody doesn't believe that's true, when they say the floor fell out, it did. They told me that they found Deanna's body, and I was just in shock. I kept picturing her at the last moments of her life, and it still sticks with me this, to this day. As a high school junior, Deanna had been thinking about her life ahead. She had plans of going to college and working with children. With all of those prospects cut short, her murder tugged at the heart of the community. She was the popular girl. She was the one everyone wanted to be around and be friends with. Hundreds attended Deanna's funeral. Her death was one the Somerville community grappled with and had everyone asking the same question. Who killed Deanna? We questioned many people more than one time. No arrests have been made. No one has been formally ruled out. But if there were any evidence linking a particular person to the crime, there would have been an arrest. No arrests, not even any official suspects have been announced in the case. Questions still swirl through Kathy's mind. And she still has questions for Tommy LeBlanc, who she claims normally walked Deanna all the way home. He didn't do that that night. All completely out of character. Other persons of interest over the years have included a sketch of an unknown man seen in the area at the time and a Somerville firefighter that was questioned early on. But anything remotely close to a lead always seemed to fizzle out. 90% of all homicides, they know the individual. It's, it's very rare where it's a stranger and it's even rarer in some of all. The absence of justice has certainly taken its toll on the Kremens, including Deanna's siblings, like her sister, Christine. She was a fierce fighter for Deanna. She would always come through and she would always show up at the events and she would always advocate and fight for her sister. What she'd be doing today if, um, you know, she didn't have an untimely death. Year after year, the Kremens never stopped asking that same question, who killed Deanna? And to this day, they still don't have an answer, which has weighed heavily on the family. Honestly, it destroyed us. I wish that I could say that we had more stamina than that. It's real hard to have stamina when you can't put two puzzle pieces together. I don't participate in social activities because I feel like I'm the mother of the murdered girl. I don't want that to be all him. I've sat with people that have said an arrest is imminent. I've been told that I may have to accept her murder may never be solved. So what progress has been made in this case? We spoke with WCVB producer Jesse Grassi, who says there's a chance it may be looked at again with fresh eyes. Murders like this don't happen in Somerville. And what was even more traumatizing for the city was that Deanna was a babysitter and two of the kids she babysat for found her body. That That's horrifying and that sticks with people. And that hasn't been forgotten and her case hasn't been forgotten by her friends and family. And it's pretty inspiring to see her friends and family relive this constantly because they, they want justice for her. How are friends and loved ones keeping Deanna's memory alive? There was a square named in her honor. So whenever someone drives through a very busy part of Somerville, you see her name. There's a playground named after her. Every year to honor the anniversary, there'll be some sort of event, whether it's a remembrance walk or a mass where Deanna's family went to church. Billboards are put up every once in a while, bringing attention to the case. So there's always something happening by the family and the friends to keep the memory of her alive. When it first happened, it, there was fear in the community that, oh my God, someone strangled a teenager 
a block away from her house. And then, you know, as the years went on, that fear turned to frustration that the murderer was never caught. And there's always an underlying sadness that, you know, this young life was lost. Her friends in our interviews talked about how, you know, they were in high school and pulled from class. And this is, you know, really the first time that they ever experienced loss as well. So there's a whole string of emotions when you think about this case. Is there any hope the person who did this or potential witnesses might still come forward? Getting a family to agree to relive a terrible tragedy like this is very difficult. So their hope in terms of speaking out and reliving this is that their story will trigger someone who may have saw something or heard something. Even bigger than that, maybe the murderer is watching and it'll hit their conscience. Here's her story. Don't forget, if you know something, speak up. That's their hope, that keeping her tragic death and in, in the attention will garner some sort of tip or the slim chance of a confession. Lots of cold cases have been solved in the last few years due to improved technology and these genealogy databases. Is that an option in this case? Well, when I interviewed D.A. Ryan, I asked her almost the same question. I said, how can DNA help with this case? And her response was that when Deanna was first murdered, DNA was relatively a new concept in terms of forensics. And so the way that her office is treating new technology is that they're always reevaluating new techniques in terms of their cold cases and unsolved crimes. So DA Ryan said there's a cold case unit that's taking a look at some of these old crimes, specifically murders that happened in the past 50 years, and seeing what they can do to re-examine the evidence and looking at new investigative techniques that might help solve this crime. I'm sure that gives the Kremen family a little hope getting fresh eyes on it, although I'm sure the case has changed hands many times over the years. When I interviewed Deanna's mother, she said part of the frustration with this case is that district attorneys in Massachusetts that investigate unsolved murders are elected officials. So when this happened in 1995, it was a DA. And then he left, and it was another one. And then it was another one. And then it was another one. So it changes hands, and the case files get you know, turned over and they do their due diligence, I'm sure. As for Deanna's case, you know, there's hope with this unit. We'll just have to wait and see what it means for the case. The DA says there's never been a suspect in this case. There's never been an arrest. And that's part of the family's frustration is that all sorts of theories go around, but because it's not official, who knows? And that person who killed her is still out there. Is there anything else you want viewers to know about this story? There is a $70,000 reward for information that'll lead to an arrest or a prosecution of this person that killed her. Around the time of her death, I think it was actually the day of her murder, she had a class assignment where she listed her goals. And to hear a 17-year-old say things like, she wants to graduate high school, she wants to find a job that she enjoyed, she wants a green convertible, she wants her family to be happy, she wants to live a long, healthy life, that was her last school assignment. Think about the family reading that assignment and they hold on to it and they go through it. You don't know what she would have been capable of doing as an adult. The world lost someone and, you know, it's a potential that was lost. And that's a pretty big tragedy. So stories like this, hopefully it'll get shared and shared and shared and that something will spark from, from the story getting attention. This episode was a viewer requested story. If there are cases like this from your community that you think deserve more attention and shared awareness, please send them our way. And if you might have information regarding the murder of Deanna Kremen, call the tip line at 617-544-7167. More information on Deanna's case can be found at facebook.com slash friends of Deanna Kremen. Until next time, I'm Alexandra Stone, and this has been your Weekly Dispatch. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like this video for more dispatches from the middle.